This begins our first lesson for value and chroma together. And last week we learned something about chroma, we learned something about value. Today we're going to review the chart that we did on shadow and shade where the light source gets the highlight, the core of the shadow, and the reflected shadow. Talking about the core of the shadow, the reflected light, and the highlight, this is where the shade is. The cast shadow goes forward away from the light. It is darkest under the object and lighter as it gets out here. You notice that it's the same shape, only it's laying on a flat surface. So it's almost like a steamroller has rolled over it. So shadow and shade and value. And how do you produce the value? The value is produced by darkening your pressure, pressing down a little harder on your pencil. Also, the pencils that we use, there's a variety of, uh, of uh, darkness. Some of it is lighter, some of it is darker. 2B, 3B, 4B, and so on, all the way to double E. And I used for the drawing here, a 2B, and as I come in to darken a little bit, I will move to a 6B, which shows you how much darker it can become. Only enhancing the value contrast. And this is what we will look at today, is value and chroma contrast. There, you see how much darker that looks? It really makes it pop. And the way you show the edge is with smudging the lost and found edge. And there it is behind your object. So you don't have to have that line drawn. And this is kind of the secret to really professional drawing. Lost and found edge. And we'll get into a little bit more of that with the watercolor. Today we're going to only stay with pencil and colored pencils. I want to show you the basic color wheel, the complementary chart, and the pigment chart that is a manufacturing um, names and so on that vary with each manufacturer. So we start with the basic color wheel. We have red, yellow, and blue. Then we have orange and yellow and purple. Those are the primaries and the secondary colors. Now the primary colors will have what we call tertiary colors in between colors, between the primary and the secondary. The secondary color is made, you see, by the mixture of the colors that are in between. So if you take a yellow and you take a red, you'll get an orange. You take a yellow and a blue, you'll get a green. You take a blue and a red, you get a purple. And in between each of those will be the colors that are tertiary or mingled with the in-between colors. It's a wonderful study and complicated, yes, but not too difficult. The pigments are all varied according to the manufacturer, as I've already said. This is a lizard crimson cadmium red, <clears throat> and these are the two main reds. A mixture of each and every one will produce a different color. And you have to choose which pigment you like the best according to the manufacturer. The circle that is down here will be the earth tones. And cadmium red, if, it's, if red is mixed with green, it produces a brown. And the in-between color will be burnt umber. Then we have red orange, and we have uh, colors that are opposite, which will produce a burnt sienna. Yellow ochre is our basic wash color of yellows. And it's one that I like. Also, we have raw sienna, and that's a favorite as well. So these are earth pigments. They coincide in what would be hue. These are called hues. We're talking about the three components of color, which is hue, chroma, and value. Now over here, we see a prism. A prism is a piece of glass, or it might be plastic, light source, a single beam of light that it shines into the prism will refract the light into the various individual colors, 
which would be red, orange, yellow, and green and blue and purple. There, this is the visible spectrum. There is an invisible spectrum, which is beyond that. And then there would be another spectrum, which would be just the uh, gamma rays and so on, the X-rays that goes in the other direction. These are the light, um, refracted light that is seen. This is what we can see. The other, the uh, invisible spectrum would be um, those colors that emanate from stars far out in the galaxies. And you can even tell the um, composition of the star by the color it emanates. It's a very, very scientific and a very amazing thing. All light, you see, um, is co composed of all of the colors. All of the colors are within a single beam of white light. Now, this speaks of light and this speaks of pigment. And I kind of have a little tube tail to show you that goes along with our lesson today. This is called the tube tail. And the stage is an artist studio open art box. And here's the picture in shadow and shade, all done with just colored pencils, of value. Now, quite by chance, they were discovered one day and were joined in harmony for a purple array. So this would be your red and your blue. And the first poem, part of the poem, shows you the little red and the little blue. The next thing happening in our story of Tube Tail, oh my. What did happen? You see, this is the way you sometimes do a drawing and then do your color overlay. And what does it say? Smashed and pounded, uncapped and unkept. The blue appeared not to have one squeeze left. <laughs> this is kind of what happens to your, your paints as they land in the oil or the watercolor box after years of being used and there's our blue. Oh my. But upon closer examination under and the scum, there was eight ounces of ounces of French ultramarine and then some. And here's our little blue. He's got a little bit left. And this helps us remember that we're to squeeze our tubes up from the bottom just like toothpaste smashed and behind the palette and quite out of sight an alluring alizarin was in the same plight and here's our little red and she's hiding when she's not in a very good place and here's red yellow and blue on the palette <gasps> suddenly before they could turn around there came a terrible thunderous sound so the red and the blue are listening and what is happening. A detectable tear emerges from the eye, forgotten, forlorn. There was a faint sigh. Oh, what happened to her? The rumbling increased, shaking a Liz and Blue, and they heard a shout, we're here too. Hey, move over, make room for us. Blue turned to say, what's all the fuss? looking quite smug and wanting in, stood cadmium red and all his kin. Get in line, stand in your place. We're going to fill up this art case. And now there's that yellow climbing into place. Meridian leaped up and down to get inside. I'm here to come along for the ride. And you see the little green jumping in. They do have an order. Now these are earth pigments. And there they are. Blue moved quickly to open some space and red jumped over purple to finish the race. And here we have all of the pigments in order in the box. Nestled closely, they line themselves up, not expecting to see the brush and the cup. 
and now we see they were about to be transformed by the rainbow rays from the sun. And this kind of puts it all together. Here's the prism, here is the visible spectrum, and here are the pigments. And so it's kind of a sweet little way to look at the difference between pigments that are light, pigments that are natural. Now today, oh, here's one more, look at this. Just a touch from its matchless ray cause the pigments to sparkle like day. Now we're going to see this happen, my friends. As we look at our sketch that we began, perhaps the other day, that we're gonna catch you up with the sketch. First of all, we're gonna go back to our number two pencil, and we're going to sketch very carefully the main lines. This is the horizon line across here and it's about maybe I would say a little less than a third of the way down from the top because this picture you see is looking out over a distant shoreline and we have a mountain here and we have their erosion lines like this and then we have a distant mountain like this and I'm showing a little snow cap just like that. All right, beginning in the sky, we have started with a light blue at the horizon and going up this way, all the way. And then over the top of it, we come down with a darker blue. And just like we did here in the circle, we're using a darker blue and a gradation, dark into light and light into dark. This is showing chroma. Now this is actually pretty bright because we haven't used a complementary color. We've used a pure pigment, which is blue and in its lighter form. So this is just an array showing you um, a simple chroma moving from bright to light. Over here we see the clouds done with the same circular motion to show roundness and it's darker underneath, much darker underneath because they're heavy, they're ready to, uh, to rain and there is shadow from the clouds. They kind of cast shadows down on the mountaintop and it's interesting, um, an artist becomes a bit of a scientist knowing things about um, <clears throat> the way in which uh, things are put together and, and certainly um, the earth, the land and loving the beauty of landscape very soon as an artist you will discover what you do best and long ago it was just uh, absolutely true in my my case i love to do landscape and i've sketched in many beautiful places in the world and perhaps um so blessed right now to live in one of the more beautiful places in its Coeur d'Alene, idaho and we call it ida snow because it's kind of like this and um, I'm showing the distant uh, snow that is just starting to fall and we perhaps will have snow by Christmas this year. All right, now I'm showing you the next section of mountain. I'm using lavender, purple, and I'm going to sketch lightly out here on this edge and I'm gonna gradually get darker down in here, which would be the um, areas where there is erosion and it will be um, places where water would run and there might be little waterfalls and I'm just going to do it quickly today and I'm going to use a bit a bit of the um, regular colored pencil and also just the black and white which I think will make a very interesting and a very nice drawing. Now it's lighter out here, there's more light on this edge. And also I'm gonna to add to that side, we'll have a little bit of warmth that will come in on this side. So I'm gonna use a bit of the yellow color, the yellow and the purple being complementary. And you're gonna see that will give a nice little tone there. So on this side of the hill that is facing what will be a little bit of warm tone over here. Just a, a hint of that warm 
clouded the horizon and I can add over it. You see, this would be like another wash coming in. And you don't want to be afraid of adding these colors when you know in your uh, scientific knowledge of how things work, you begin to study and learn that the light comes down and it, as it falls over the mountain, it will bring a shadow and it will cast its own shadow, cast upon itself. And so then I'm going to move right into this mountain and uh, just uh, shading it in its erosion areas. And of course, we can bring in earth tones and earth colors as well. But our main thought here today is to study chroma and value and see how that works. Okay. You can always use a little bit of an eraser and you could shade it if you want to with the eraser. You can add or subtract. Pencil is a wonderful tool because it's easy to change it. It's easy to erase it. All right, so I'm gonna add the same color in here as I had over here. So it's in concert, everything flowing the same way you don't want to um, change uh, continuity. It has to be consistent. Consistency is a very important thing in painting. You want to, if you start with something, you should uh, totally stay with it and don't um, flip it <laughs> halfway. In other words, um, those colors, the yellow and the purple are the two colors I want to use here, no matter what. And I'll show you how I'm going to use them as I begin to move into this final section of the mountain. And remember, this is background. So you don't want it to be too strong at the beginning of this drawing. Now, I'm going to uh, bring in the yellow. Just like this, the yellow comes in this way. All right. And then I'm going to increase that because there will be some trees in the section there, okay? And remembering that I have the purple in this section. All right. Coming down this way. And then I'm going to be able to bring this darker right in to the shoreline. And then I'm going to do some trees. And I will stay with the purple. And this consistently continues the harmony. All right, just like that. I believe we have enough of a lesson to start with today. And this will be part one of the value and chroma drawing. And we'll continue this next time.